Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you wanted a 6 core 12 thread CPU then you'd likely be looking towards a core i7 but we all know that that's likely to be quite costly. For example a top of the range but slightly older Haswell E 5820K will still set you back about $350. It's a few hundred of whatever currency you look at it in to be honest so allow me to introduce you to the X5650 a hexa-core processor that also features 12 threads but currently costs around $50 on the used market. Today we're going to be comparing these two processors. Now I want to get something out of the way first and that is that this CPU uses the 1366 socket, the motherboards for which cost over $100 and then of course you have to make sure that the one you choose is compatible with this chip. Let's say that the average price after looking at around 30 pages of eBay auctions is about 150 both in dollars or pounds for a board that supports this CPU. But before you write off this whole idea consider that the price of a 5820K for example and compatible 2011 socket motherboard averages out at around 500 whereas an X5650 and 1366 board will likely set you back around 200 both used or refurbished examples. Furthermore, if you already have a 1366 board, then you may only need the CPU. Let's look at the specs. The i7-5820K is clocked at 3.3GHz, features 6 cores, 12 threads and has a support for up to 64GB of RAM. It launched in 2014. The Xeon 5650 is clocked at 2.66GHz, also has 6 cores and 12 threads, supports up to 288GB of RAM and launched in 2010. So can this $50 CPU compete and therefore act as a great alternative to this i7? Let's find out. Now it's an overclock that really brings out the best in this processor so we've got ours at 4 gigahertz. I'm new to Xeon overclocking but after doing a little bit of research it's a fairly simple thing to do. A 22 times multiplier and base clock of 182 did the trick. As a server grade chip voltage isn't that much of a worry so as long as it stays below 1.4 just watch those temperatures. With all that done, we added our GTX 1060 into the mix and tested out some games. I also borrowed the i7 and motherboard bundle for today for comparative results and kept that at stock. Let's start with Fallout 4. Now we've turned everything up to ultra 1080p including anti-aliasing to achieve a very battery smooth 77 frames per second over a half hour playtime. This is of course just a brief glimpse but the averages are compiled after playing the games in different areas with different things happening on screen. In comparison the i7 got 85 so we've started off quite closely. Next up it's Crisis 3 and we turned everything way up once again to very high with 8 times MSAA to really push these CPUs to the limit. It's no surprise that this was quite crippling and an average of 33 frames per second seemed poor in comparison to Fallout 4, but you have to remember Crisis 3, just like the original, still brings PCs to their knees. Our $350 Core i7 didn't seem much different here as it stuck to around 32, but with one frame in it this was pretty much an equal affair. GTA 5 now with everything up to ultra with MSAA off, the Xeon 5650 at 4GHz achieved 65fps, we kept MSAA off here despite still being able to see 52 frames with it on. GTA 5 and Fallout 4 always seem to perform very similar, so chances are if you have a system that runs Fallout 4, it will run GTA 5. Anyway. Our i7-5820K was in the lead again here with 72, but I'm still impressed considering the price difference of these two chips. So finally, let's play some Metro Last Light Redux. Once again, 1080p with very high settings, but we made sure to turn the in-game SSAA option off, as it can be very unnecessarily taxing. With our $50 X5650, we hovered around the 62 frames per second point and experienced far more frequent frame drops to be honest. Nothing that made the game unplayable, but I feel the need to mention it regardless. Whilst our i7 this time was actually a little worse off at 59, there were reduced frame drops, which I can't quite explain away. But our now budget Xeon seems to have come out doing alright. 
To conclude, this little chip is very impressive and it was only after reading about it on a forum that I discovered its potential. Whilst it is cheap these days at way under $100, you have to remember that a motherboard will set you back three times the cost of this CPU. But that is still cheaper than buying an i7 on its own. These i7s are awesome no doubt, but there's something quite special about the X5650, especially when it comes with a small price tag. If you don't mind paying a premium for an older board, then this may be the way to go, even when compared to newer Core i7s. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know your thoughts on the Xeon processor or if you've had any experiences with it. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.